My name is Rich Harrington and welcome to this week's edition of Photoshop for Video. Today we're going to look at a technique that you could use to save time on your production budgets. A lot of times you're going to need to do a pickup or a quick shot and if you actually shoot the environment or some of your backdrops you could build up a library that you can use for chroma key. Here's how. I've got a series of backdrops that we use at our production studios and one of the things we do is we make sure to actually capture these so we have them readily available. Here they are as raw files. Let's go ahead and click open. And you see here they open. I've got different ones to work with. Let's go ahead here and just click through. And they've got a good natural depth to them. The goal here is to not actually get them completely in focus, but rather to have them focused so they would be in an actual shoot. Now, one way to do this is to simply have somebody step in in front of the backdrop where the person would normally be when you shoot them and then focus on them. That way, the backdrop will fall slightly out of focus for the natural depth of field behind them. It's really simple. Same thing works in an environmental shot. If you're doing a particular interview in an office or maybe an outdoor setting, have someone stand in where the interviewee would be, focus on them, and then hold the focus and fire off a few shots. So, here we go. Let's go ahead and work with this one here. And I'm gonna go ahead adjust a few things. I can click auto if I want for exposure. If we've got highlights, we could pull those down with recovery. And I'm going to go ahead and pop the vibrance a bit so it's nice and rich. That looks good. I'll go ahead and open up that individual image. And the raw file comes across. Now, here's the cool thing about Photoshop. It's really easy to change the color of a backdrop just by using a hue saturation adjustment layer. I can go up to the adjustments panel in CS4 and click on Hue Saturation. If you're using older versions of Photoshop, simply choose Layer, New Adjustment Layer, Hue Saturation. Once you have that, a quick slide of the Hue slider will give you different color backdrops. I can go ahead and take that and take the saturation down a bit. That looks good. And let's go ahead and turn that layer off. And we'll go ahead and add another Hue Saturation Adjustment Layer. And this time we'll roll this a little bit towards yellow. A little less saturated, a little darker. There we go. Let's push that a little bit towards green. Make that nice and dark. There we go. And we'll do one more. Go back. And let's just roll this here. Nice rich blue. A little less saturated. A little darker. Good. And now we could save the three of those off. Let's go ahead here. I'm going to make a set of layer comps. I'll just call up the comp window. This works great for saving multiple designs. I'll name this one blue. Make my next layer comp. Call that one green. Together, those were making a nice rich purple. Let's turn those both off. Here we have a lighter purple. And let's see how these other ones combine. That's a good brown. And of course, our original red. So you see if we step through our layer comp window, we have several different looks, all from the same backdrop, just by using adjustment layers. The nice thing about the layer comps, they're really easy to export for use in another application. I could simply choose File, Scripts, Layer Comps to Files. And what we're going to do here is go ahead and write out some flattened files. I'll use a TIFF file, and I'll go ahead and browse here. Let's go ahead and store this into the same folder. We'll make this here. We'll call it Backdrops. Choose that destination. And let's just call this. There we go. Looks good. And I can click Run. The Layer Comp script takes over and writes out each file to the desktop folder that I specified. That's done. I'll click OK and switch over to After Effects. Now, you can key in whatever program you want. 
I'm just going to use Adobe After Effects to keep it within the same family. Double click and we'll bring those backdrops in. There they are. And let's grab our keying footage, just a sample clip. There we go. I'll create a new comp from that clip. You can just drag that clip onto the new comp icon. And in doing so, you'll automatically get a comp that's sized right for the video footage and is the correct duration to match the duration of the clip. This is the easiest way to take an individual shot and create a new composition to match its specs. We can go ahead and set this back to one view. And let's just zoom this back a little bit. I'll take those backdrops and drop them down below. And let's select our top clip here and choose Effect, Keying, Key Light. Now Key Light is bundled with After Effects. It works very, very well. We'll go ahead and click on the eyedropper to select our color. That worked well. And let's switch this to view the screen matte. In doing so, you get a good idea of what's keying. So you see here we've got a little bit of spill and a little bit in here that we want to clean up. Twirl down screen matte and we can work with this. What we want to do is do some clipping on the black and that will pick some of that up. Plus, to be honest, nothing is keeping us from cropping that. So we could just go ahead, pull that in with a pen tool if we wanted. Let's just drag through the footage and see if she moves her arms. Well, she does, so let's just clean that up. And we'll go ahead here and play with despot. I can go ahead and despot some of the black. And notice how that cleaned up the black fringe inside the frame here, like the eyes and the hair. And then I'll despot some of this white. There we go. And let's just clip the black a little more. There we go. Drag through. Looking pretty good. Switch that back to final result. And that's looking good. So we've got all of our backdrops back there. I'm going to go ahead and size these to fit. An easy shortcut for that is Command Option F for Force Fit. That worked well. I'll press S for Scale and scale those up just slightly to get rid of the fringe. And all those backdrops are in there. I could turn those off and step between them. And you see that we've got the different backdrops loaded, giving us quite a bit of flexibility for a particular interview. If you want to make that a little further out of focus, easiest thing to do is to just toss on an adjustment layer, layer new adjustment layer. Then go on over to the blur category. Let's put that behind the key footage. And the best blur to do, of course, is going to be the lens blur. But if you're impatient, a quick fast blur will work. Just click Repeat Edges and take that up to a small value, maybe five pixels or so, and you see that's throwing it out of focus. A little bit more even, that's looking good. Let's set that to a value of about eight. Good. And then we'll finish that out. Let's add another adjustment layer on top, and we could add a photo filter. Color correction photo filter. And here, I'll go ahead and actually pick up on the color. We could do custom, and I'll sample a color from that background. And that's just picking up the color of the backdrop and introducing it into the skin, and that works well. So if I were going to have the brownish backdrop there, I would actually take that and eyedropper on the brown. And what that's doing is sampling the background color and laying it on top gently, producing more natural results essentially taking a little bit of color spill and putting it back into the footage, which makes the key more believable. So, hope you enjoyed this week's edition of Photoshop for Video. My name's Rich Harrington. Be sure to check out our resource blog at photoshopforvideo.com, where you'll find lots of great downloads and other tutorials. Thanks again.